Today we're going to be installing these block half shaft spacer. Uh, it is for a S2000, AP1, AP2. If your car have uh, vibration in the rear and your car is lowered, usually these will work to get that vibration away. It has to do with the half shaft. So uh, what it does is, these are spacers, excuse my voice, getting over a cold. But uh, these are spacers, and it just spaces out the half shaft. I'll show you what it does when I install them. And uh, it's supposed to take that vibration away. My car been vibrating like that for years. I just kind of ignored it. Um, then I found out about these spacers, so I figured I'd give it a shot. I've never videotaped me doing work on my S2K. Some of you probably don't even know I own an S2K. But uh, here it is. It's covered up. I drive the Integra more. As you can see, the Integra is back there. The S2K be covered up, so I'm going to uncover it and park it where I can work on it. And uh, we take it from there. All right, so here's my S2K. I uh, covered it. Like I say, some of you probably don't even, own, don't even know I own this car. But it has a carbon fiber hardtop, authentic BBS wheels, 18. Uh, carbon fiber hood. Everything else is pretty stock. I got a little lip on there with a, it's a mini splitter. It's not really a, a full, like thick one. But uh, it's pretty clean. It, it's dusty now. From, you can see all the dirt and smudge on it from being covered up out here. It's not in the garage or anything. So, you know. But uh, it's a cool car. I have fun with it. And uh, like I said, I drive it every now and then. So uh, let's get to what needs to be done. The inside. Let me take you in real quick. My wife's Infinity covered up behind me but uh just the inside like i said it's a pretty cool car i enjoy it it's stock no uh major modifications got an intake on the exhaust that's about it so uh let's get this party started this is just for a heads up Always hold on to your OEM jack. These things come in handy, especially when you have a lower car, depending on what kind of jack you have. I have a low profile jack, but for some reason it still can't get up under here. The only thing that can get up under my car when it's uh, sitting on the ground is an OEM jack. This one is actually from a Ford Focus. The Honda ones don't have this big metal piece right here it sticks up pretty high but it still get the job done i held on to it because it had the the pole to spin it i like the honda oem one better because it's flat right here but i uh, try to hold on to at least one or two of them i put it under the car i raise it with this just to get started and then i go to the, the bigger jacks that fit up under there so this is low profile jack but it's not low enough to get up under my car so just to show you i raised it from the rear end and uh, i'm gonna use some other jacks to support it never lay under a car with just one jack holding it without jack stands or at least another jack to assist the one that's holding it so uh raising it from the rear end and i'm gonna put one jack on both sides just to support it all right, so those spaces are gonna go in between this bad boy right here. So what it's gonna do is go push this half shaft back and it's gonna put a space in the middle, probably about a half an inch. And supposedly the half shaft over time, <clears throat> it wears like a pivot on the inside. And while it's spinning, it's hitting that pivot and that's what gives it the vibration, bloom, 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 bloom. So, that pivot is in a certain spot. So by spacing it, it moves the half shaft away from that pivot and I guess to a smoother location and it takes that vibration away. So we're gonna see if it helps and uh, take it from there. 
Check my heads up. I don't know about yours, but my bolts was on there pretty good. So what I did, I used a uh, electric impact Craftsman, but it wasn't strong enough. So uh, and yes, it was charged, fully charged, but it's pretty old, so probably don't have the cojones that it used to. So what I did, my handy dandy copper pipe. All I did is put a ratchet with a pipe on the end. And you're just using it as leverage. And it'll help you uh, put more force on the bolt to break it free. So if you can't get it free with an electric ratchet or something like that. Or with a regular ratchet. Just put a... Let me back up so I can show you. Yeah, just put a pipe on the end. Like I said. This is a regular ratchet. Put a pipe on the end. It makes it longer just make sure the car is high enough off the ground to where you can use something like this and it's just for leverage and it takes less force to uh pop it loose because of the extra leverage that you have so wherever your uh the position of the half shaft usually you can get the three of them so as you can see i broke that one loose broke that one loose and there's one back here broke loose I'm going to have to spin it to get to the other three. So, do three. And make sure the handbrake is up. Because if you don't have the handbrake up, it will spin. So, have the handbrake up. Break three loose. And then spin it. Pull the handbrake. Break the other three. Take it apart. So, let's do the other three. And space it out and take it from there. Alright. So, as you can see, I rotated it. Now, I'm down to the last three. One back there, one right here, one right there. The one up there I already removed. And remember, both of the wheels is already off the ground. So when you get three loose on this side, you should be able to get three loose on the other side. As you can see, I got three loose on the other side when I got three loose on the uh, driver's side. So, you know, you want to work a little smarter, not harder. So uh, do both sides at the same time when I rotated it the three over here is at the bottom just how the three on the driver's side so you should be able to get them all together the passenger side is a little harder because the exhaust is in the way but it wasn't that hard to where I couldn't get to it so uh, I'm gonna knock out these three which is uh, I already got loose this one loose I just can't turn it with my hand so I'm gonna knock out those three separate them put the three back in tighten it rotate it put the other three back in and be done with this so uh taking me a little longer because i'm doing it manually i don't have any power tools well i have a power tool but just not strong enough so uh let's do these uh last six bolts and get those spaces in there all right so as you can see i got all the bolts out got this separated all i did was get a flat tip screwdriver Put the uh, the flat piece in there and just uh, just twisted it like that and then pushed it out. It was already loose. I didn't even have to really use no force. It pretty much came apart as soon as the bolts came out. So I can't do it with one hand, but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna slide this back and put one of the uh, the spacers in. And I just wanna show you something real quick. One second. All right now spacer this is the spacer it has a lip on one side and then the other side is flat this lip goes towards the uh, the rear end the, the differential so make sure that lip goes in like that so like I said I can't do it with one hand but separate it put this in lip faces the differential so I'm gonna do that right now and put three bolts through it to hold it spin it put the other side on and then you know lock it all together all right as you can see i got the driver's side put together uh depending on what kit you get mine came with allen screws i'm not really a fan of uh, allen keys but you know so be it but i got them in i put loctite on the ends just so it don't come apart you might not have to but you know better safe than sorry 
uh, I recommend it and you torque them down to 61 foot pounds which is the OEM spec I didn't actually torque mine with a torque wrench I just made sure they're tight um, when I say tight I mean tight not just how can I say like hand tight or spark plug tight really put some torque on them just in case you know and I put Loctite with it so this is the finishing touch of the spacer and like I say all it does is space it out so the axle is not riding on that pivot that it made uh, when it's lowered and this brand is by blocks as you can see in the beginning and it fit pretty cool it was an easy fit quick install but I want to emphasize if you do buy the uh, spacers these are still in the pack make sure you get the ones that they're halves it's a full circle but they come in in uh, two halves hey you look know, you put the two halves together sorry you got the plastic on it but you can see on the, the install See if you can see it in the camera but yeah right here you see that separation that's because there's two halves it's a half up there and a half down there it make it a lot easier to install these because there's a rod that go through into the uh the differential and if you don't have the two halves you'll have to pull this half shaft all the way out to get uh to the end of that rod Cause I've seen some of these spacers that was just a full circle. And if it's a full circle, you have to take the axle all the way out, put it through that rod that goes into the, uh, uh, the differential, and then bolt everything back up. But since these are halves, you know, you could just slide it back, put one half in, put the other half in, and bolt it up. And it's a lot easier. So I recommend you stay away from the, uh, the, uh, the one piece full circle ones. Not saying that they're bad, it's just that you're gonna have to do a lot more work to get those on there. But the preference is yours. Just giving you a heads up. So uh this is the finishing touch on the driver's side. Passenger side I still have to do, but it's the same thing, so you know no need to record that same exact steps. So I uh, hope you liked the video. So like, uh subscribe, and once again. I'll catch you in my next video. Thanks for watching and God bless.